Hi kids. As promised, I wanted to make a short video comparing the quality of power between that which I get from my electric provider, a traditional generator, and the new Harbor Freight Predator 9500 generators. I've temporarily bypassed my interlock and activated the inlet breaker while on main power. This makes this scary setup here dangerously output 220 volt power, but also gives me a safer way to attach the oscilloscope. So this is our baseline. Nice clean power from the power company, and we're looking at 255 volts at 60 hertz. As we zoom into the waveform, our lines are nice and crisp, nothing crazy here. And at 120 volts, it's the same thing, just smaller waves, nice and clean. Now, let's cut to an equally scary setup I made on two Harbor Freight generators running in parallel and currently powering the house. I made a plug that allows me to easily hook into the 220 output where I can control the voltage output switching on and off the breaker on the front panel here. Since these units are teamed together, what we're seeing is the actual waveform that's being sent into the house of the combined units. This is why we want an inverter generator. Looking at this pattern, it's almost indistinguishable from the regular line voltage from the power company with only one volt difference. Same with the 110 volt feed. Now, I do have a soft start on my AC unit, but even then, when it's experiencing a strong load hit as seen here with a 5 ton central AC unit kicking in, it's only observable changes as a slight bump in engine speed and one single volt change in the power output. So, now let's do a split screen, and you tell me which is which, side by side. This is some nice clean power that is totally safe for all the electronics in your household. Consider all the household appliances that may have sensitive electronics in them. Your clothes washer and dryer, your microwave, most stoves, certainly modern refrigerators and the control boards in your air conditioning units. We're not just talking about your TVs and computers here, which will certainly also care about this. So if you're going to power your house, you really should consider this factor when choosing a generator. Why? Well, now let's look at a traditional generator's power. This is a 5250 watt with a 6500 watt surge power back generator with traditional coil winding. It too makes 240 volts AC or 110 AC depending on your needs. But first off, I'm not hooking this thing up to my house because I have a lot of those sensitive electronic devices that I don't really care to risk. So we're going to use an electric motor in my box fan to put some loads on it. I've gone full sketch here with this hookup, but I've tried to make it as safe as possible, but still, so with all these tests, don't try this at home. This machine runs at one speed as it has to in order to maintain 60 hertz. It's incredibly loud, obnoxiously loud, and the power is, well, let's take a look at that. So here's the waveform. It's definitely got the frequency right in the range of 60 hertz, but look at the lines. This is what people mean when they say dirty power. Now let's add a load to it. We see the power frequency directly influenced by the strain of the engine needing to catch up to the added resistance. So how about a magic split screen showing all three? Again, tell me which is line power, which is the pure sine wave from the inverter generator, and which is the traditional generator. I bet you can only identify one of them. And this is also the reason I went with this setup with an inverter generator, or rather two inverter generators, as opposed to a traditional home backup generator. This is the cleaner way to do it and not impact your electronics. So that's it. Short and sweet. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.